About five years ago, Ram really shook things up in the half-ton pickup segment by taking a small turbo diesel engine and sticking it right here under the hood of the Ram 1500 half-ton truck. That engine was so successful that everybody decided to join the party. General Motors has a new 3-liter inline 6 under the hood of the Sierra and the Silverado, and of course, Ford has a 3-liter V6 under the hood of the F-150 as well. For 2020, Ram has brought the 3-liter turbo diesel back in its third-generation form, now producing 480 pound-feet of torque, which is the most torque you can get in this particular category at the moment. Now, I've only been able to spend about a day with this truck right here and drive it for about 100 miles or so, so if you want to know all the details on this truck, be sure and stay tuned for our full review on the Ram 1500 diesel. But in this video, we're going to talk about the basics. We're going to talk about why you might want the diesel over the gasoline engine, how much it's going to cost, and then, of course, we're going to talk a little bit about the competition. Ram decided to keep the turbo diesel versions pretty discreet. So other than the turbo diesel badge that you see right there on that side of the hood, the front end looks exactly the same as the 3.6 liter V6 or the 5.7 liter V8 versions of the Ram. So we get the same grill. This particular model is the top end limited trim. The grill does change depending on the version of the Ram you get. And the diesel is now available in the Ram Rebel. That's the one with sort of the frowny face right up front. It's the more off-road oriented version of the 1500 pickup truck. The model that we're driving here has the full LED headlamps and these do steer in the corners. These are some of the better headlamps in this particular segment. There's a lot of chrome going on here. We have a metal bumper as you'd expect and beefy tow hooks down at the bottom. According to Ram, you'll be able to find the 2020 Eco Diesel on dealer lots for test drives or for purchase around November of the 2019 calendar year. But when you go to the dealer to test drive one of these, you'll notice that the Ram 1500 Classic Eco Diesel will be parked right next to it. That's because Ram is still selling the older generation of the Ram 1500 concurrently with this brand new generation, but there are a few differences. The first difference is that the Ram 1500 Classic is still available with a regular cab and long bed configuration, something that you cannot do with the newer 1500 design. Although Ram has not specifically commented on this, I expect the Ram 1500 Classic to hang out for a while. There's even talk about it getting a mild refresh. And then there's also talk about this generation of the 1500 getting a two-door variant. So both of those are likely in the future, but they're not announced at the moment. So at the moment, if you want a two-door Ram 1500, you'll be getting the Ram 1500 Classic. And if you want the top-end trims in your 1500, you'll have to get this model right here because they're no longer gonna be making the very top-end trims of the previous body style. The other thing to keep in mind is that under the hood, we don't get the same 3-liter diesel engine. At least for the moment, the 1500 Classic will continue to use the second-generation 3-liter Eco Diesel V6. That produces 240 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. Those numbers are a little bit behind the GM inline-6 or the Ford 3-liter V6 diesels. That's why this generation of the Ram 1500 Classic gets an entirely new third generation engine. According to Ram, only about 15 to 20 percent of the parts are common between this engine and the one that we find in the Ram 1500 Classic. They've given this a new block, new cylinder head, new injectors, a compression increase, an entirely new turbo. We also get new pistons, a slightly tweaked crankshaft design, and then improved cooling in order to support the massive increase in torque we get out of this engine, from 420 pound-feet of torque in the previous generation to 480 pound-feet of torque in this generation. Horsepower goes from 240 up to 260. That's 17 fewer horsepower than we find in the new General Motors inline six turbo diesel, but 20 more pound-feet of torque and 40 more pound-feet of torque than we find in the Ford 3-liter V6. Power is sent to the wheels by a standard ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. It's essentially the same 8-speed that we find behind the V8, although it has been tweaked a little bit in the software in order to accommodate the 3 liters power curve. We don't have official fuel economy numbers for this engine just yet. We're told that this has not been certified by the EPA for fuel economy, but I expect that the combined numbers are going to come in between 24 and perhaps 26 miles per gallon. While the engineers dialed up the power and torque, they dialed down the engine noise for this generation. So this is a little bit quieter on the inside and on the outside than the previous generation diesel. If you were hoping that this would sound like a mini version of the Cummins diesel that we find in the 2500 and 3500, you may be a little bit disappointed. But if on the other hand you were looking for a very quiet, very civilized diesel, that's exactly what you're going to find under here. Moving to the rear and hanging out right next to an exhaust tip, you can't really hear a whole lot going on. It's worth noting that this generation of the 3 liter Eco Diesel does not include an exhaust brake like we find on the Cummins or on the GM 3 liter inline 6. I think that's a little bit of a pity. I would have liked to have seen a limited exhaust brake functionality on this engine design because that really would have helped improve mountain towing. 
Ram decided to make the diesel available in every trim of the 1500 for 2020. That means you'll find it in the entry-level tradesman trim, the top end limited trim, and even the off-road rebel trim. This top end limited trim has the twin chrome exhaust tips right down there. Again, a metal bumper down there at the bottom. And this model has Ram's new trick tailgate, which splits like a barn door right there. It's a 60-40 design. You can open this side independently and then close this side if you wanted to, for instance, and leave longer items hanging out right there. Or if you were to latch it back into place, you can still open it like a traditional tailgate. This is not quite as handy as the multi-pro tailgate that we see in the GMC Sierra, but this tailgate is more available in the Ram pickup line. So you can get this in much lower trims, much less expensive versions of the Ram 1500 than the multi-pro tailgate. And this has a few features that are a little bit different as well. So for instance, if you wanted to forklift something into the Ram 1500, this is going to be easier to do in here than with something like that multi-pro tailgate, because you could just come right on here and drop it right there on the bed, scoot it in a little bit closer. That removes the tailgate from the equation, which can be a little bit tricky when forklifting things into the pickup. Now, this space is a little bit tight here. I think it would have been nice if these doors opened just a little bit wider, but again, this is still definitely going to be a handy option. And there's a little rubber bumper over here on this side so that way if you decide to try and close the barn door in the improper fashion, you won't end up bending the side of your tailgate. When it comes to tailgate capability, Ram tells us that the weight rating on this tailgate is identical to the regular tailgate. So they've designed this hinge mechanism to accommodate the same sort of weight that we find in the rest of the Ram truck lineup. Part of that has to do with the way that it latches together right back here. There's a separate hinge for each side of this barn door arrangement. So it's not like the weight that you're putting right here is truly going into the bend of the tailgate. You can see that there's a little bit of motion independent from one another, but it never folds like a taco right there in the middle. So you'll have no problem driving, for instance, a motorcycle up into the bed of your truck if you want to do that. When it comes to interior comfort and interior refinement, the Ram 1500 is definitely at the top of its class. Because the interior is the same as the rest of the Ram lineup, I'm not going to spend too much time here talking about that, but I will say that the driver's seat is very comfortable. We also have a tilt telescopic steering column with a decent range of motion, and the overall fit and finish of the dashboard components especially is very, very high for this segment, definitely above what we see in the Sierra and the Silverado. Until the competition changes something, the Ram also has one of the most comfortable back seats available in this segment. You can really see how much leg room I have left with that driver's seat adjusted for me at six feet tall. And the rear seats have a recline function, which is a nice touch right back here. The bottom slides forward, allowing the rear to recline in that manner. There's definitely a lot of room back here if you wanted to put child seats or larger adults back here. They shouldn't have any problem at all. With 480 pound-feet of torque on tap and all of that torque arriving at much lower RPMs than the previous generation Eco Diesel or even the 5.7 liter V8, towing is clearly one of the reasons you'd want to get the Eco Diesel in your next 1500. Depending on the trim level and options you select, towing could top out at 12,000 560 pounds. Now that is a little bit lower than the 5.7 liter V8 at 12,750. Why is that? Well, the diesel is a little bit heavier than the 5.7 liter V8 and all of the other systems that go along with the diesel engine like the diesel exhaust fluid tank and filling it with exhaust fluid, etc. All that has to be taken into account and that does result in a very slight reduction in overall towing ability. Max payload also takes a little bit of a hit for the same reason. The gasoline version tops out at 2,300 pounds. This version right here will top out at 2,040 pounds, but the model that we're driving, which has a lot of options on the inside that add extra weight, this one comes in at 1,400 pounds of payload. On average, you will find slightly higher payload ability in the Ford F-150 diesel, but this is a lot closer than the last generation Ram. If you're the kind of truck owner that does a lot of heavy payload moving or a lot of heavy towing, you're definitely going to want the air suspension in your 1500, and here's why. When load leveling, it's going to return the suspension to the midpoint in its travel. That's going to make handling in the 1500 an awful lot better, especially emergency maneuver handling, than if you didn't have the optional air suspension. The air suspension also makes connecting and disconnecting a trailer a breeze. You simply set the vehicle to its highest height setting, you crank down that jack tilt just barely touches the ground, you release everything, and then you order the vehicle down to its lowest ride height setting, and the trailer will simply come right off the ball, and then you can drive away. When you want to reconnect the trailer, you reverse the process, lift it back up to its highest height setting, and then you won't really have a whole lot of jack adjusting to do. If you haven't driven a diesel in a while, then this engine is probably going to surprise you because we don't get a lot of those traditional diesel drawbacks. We don't have that same kind of clatter that we found in diesels 10 years ago. This doesn't really sound like a smaller version of the Cummins diesel in the 2500 and 3500 either. Now again, for some folks that may be a disappointment, but I think for most shoppers out there, they're going to want the quieter nature of this particular engine. 
At idle, you will hear a little bit of injector noise, a little bit of that classic diesel clatter, but it's very, very muted inside the cabin. And out here, whether we're romping on the throttle, right like there, or whether we're just cruising along at 60 miles an hour, you're not really going to hear much of the engine. The other thing you're gonna notice is that acceleration is not as slow as you might think a diesel could be. In our initial zero to 60 test, it took 9.2 seconds for this diesel model to get up to highway speeds. That is a little bit slower than the 5.7 liter V8, but not too far off of the V6. The obvious compensation for the longer zero to 60 time is the fuel economy. We've been averaging about 35 miles per gallon out on the highway and about 24 to 25 miles per gallon in mixed driving over a day of driving this out here in Duluth. The temperatures have been pretty mild, but we have been using the air conditioning. Aside from that, this feels just like any other Ram 1500 out on the road. The cabin is very quiet. In our recent testing of the 5.7 liter V8 model, this scored one of the lowest cabin noise scores that we've ever tested here at Alex Nottos, whether we're talking about trucks or SUVs or sedans, even luxury cars out there. We also have a very good ride for a pickup truck. Now keep in mind, this is still a truck. It was still designed to have 1400 pounds of payload back there in the bed. So the suspension is definitely gonna be firmer than something like a Ford Expedition or a Chevy Tahoe, but the suspension is not gonna be as unyielding as the suspensions that we find in the Ford F-150 or the Silverado 1500. This definitely has a softer tune overall. When it comes to overall suspension tune, the air suspension definitely makes things a little bit more compliant and a little bit more comfortable than the standard suspension. So if you're looking for a comfortable highway cruiser in a truck, this is definitely the option that you're gonna to wanna to select. Bottom line out on the road, if you're looking for the sportiest engine option, that's not gonna be the three liter diesel. That's gonna be the 5.7 liter Hemi. Not only are you gonna get better zero to 60 times, it's also gonna sound a lot better in my opinion. That exhaust note is really, really great in the 5.7 Hemi. On the other hand, if you're looking for a comfortable highway cruiser with excellent fuel economy or a really, really great towing pickup truck, that's definitely going to be this engine right here. I have to say, if I was looking to haul a 10,000 pound trailer for any decent distance, this is the option that I would want. We get a lot of low end torque that really helps improve the overall towing feel out on the road. Now again, zero to 60 times may be a little bit better with the 5.7 liter Hemi, even with those heavier trailers attached, but the way the vehicle feels while towing, that's gonna be better in the diesel. The massive amount of low-end torque is really obvious when you take off from a standstill with a heavier trailer attached to the truck. Now, this particular trailer weighs about 7,000 pounds. So that's clearly not anywhere near the top-end tow limit of this particular truck, which is over 12,000 pounds when properly equipped. Now, as I usually disclaim, obviously keep in mind the tow rating of your particular vehicle because options, trim levels, et cetera, those do change the overall payload and towing ability. And keep that payload figure in mind because you should be putting 10 to 15% of the overall weight of your trailer on the tongue. So obviously you cannot tow 12,000 pounds while also having 1,000 pounds of cargo inside your 1500. If you're the kind of truck shopper that does need to put 1,000 pounds of cargo in the bed, or a thousand pounds of people right here in the cab and still tow a 10,000 pound trailer, then you're gonna to wanna to be looking at a three quarter ton or one ton pickup truck because the payload rating here is just not high enough. In this particular truck, it's right around 1400 pounds. Keep in mind that payload does include the driver and any passengers in the vehicle. So this would have just 1,000 pounds of payload left if I put two 200 pound people inside the cab. That would give us about 10,000 pounds of theoretical maximum towing capability. 10% of the weight on the tongue equals 1,000 pounds. And you can do the math from there. The more people you put in the cab, the fewer things you could put back there in the back. But a 7,000 pound boat is definitely a realistic load for this kind of truck because you could carry four or five people and all the supplies as you'd want for a weekend of fun away from home, and then of course, the boat right there behind you. A 7,000 pound trailer is not exactly a lightweight, so you're still gonna have to dig a little deeper into the throttle and the engine and transmission are still gonna have to downshift in order to help get you up the hill, but this definitely has a very solid, very stable feel to it overall, and the eight-speed automatic transmission really is an excellent partner to this engine. As much as I like the 10-speed automatic transmission in the Ford and the GM trucks, I have to say that I like this ZF 8-speed automatic transmission better. The shifts are a little bit more crisp, they're a little bit smoother, and they also seem a little bit better timed. Sometimes that 10-speed automatic transmission can feel like it's tripping over itself, picking the wrong gear here or there. We never seem to see that in this ZF 8-speed, whether we're talking about the Ram 1500 with the 3.6-liter V6, the 5.7-liter V8, or now this 3-liter Eco Diesel. The ZF 8-speed is just an absolutely excellent transmission, and that's why we see this same transmission in a lot of performance luxury vehicles out there, from BMW, from Audi, Rolls-Royce, and even Bentley. They all use essentially this same 8-speed automatic transmission. 
Much like we see in the larger Ram pickup trucks, we have a gear limit button right here on the steering wheel rather than a true manual transmission mode. Now, when you're engaging these lower gears, you'll notice that we don't get as much engine braking as we can in the 5.7 liter V8. That's simply because this is a three liter engine. It's not as big as the 5.7. Therefore, we just don't get the same kind of engine braking, even though this is a diesel. Now, clearly we get more engine braking here than we get in the 3.6 liter V6 because of the higher compression ratios. As I said before, I really wish that this engine was given an exhaust brake because I think that would have been a nice feature in this truck. At this point in time, the only truck in the half ton segment that has that exhaust brake functionality is gonna be the Chevy Silverado with the inline six. And that will give you more engine braking ability than we see in this or in the Ford. Engine braking is important because it's going to help save the lifetime of the brake pads, not just on the tow vehicle, but also your trailer behind. Because remember, when we're towing heavier weights, you really should have electric brakes on your trailer. While I have a trailer connected, it's a good time to talk about active safety systems. Because the Ram 1500 has the usual things you'd expect, like trailer sway control to help keep a heavier trailer in check. But it also has nice touches like a blind spot monitoring system that is trailer aware. And not all of the pickup trucks out there have such a system. Oddly enough, for instance, the Ram 2500 and Ram 3500, they have a blind spot monitoring system that's not trailer aware. You can tell because in this instrument cluster right here, it has a little trailer icon. It's recognized that a trailer is connected to the vehicle and it says 30 feet. It knows how long this trailer is overall. So if I were to turn on my turn signal to the left right here, and if someone was in the blind spot of the vehicle or the trailer, this would let me know. This is a really handy feature if you have a longer trailer connected to the vehicle where it may be a little bit more difficult to see exactly what's in your blind spot and it's a good reminder just to give you that extra level of safety. Another nice touch on this particular truck is that we have radar adaptive cruise control, a feature that is not yet available on the Chevy Silverado for some reason, and we have autonomous emergency braking that is also trailer aware. It will interact with the electric trailer brakes. Full disclaimer here, of course, even though this truck has electronic trailer sway control and it has the adaptive air suspension with load leveling in the rear, you should still be using a weight distributing hitch. And personally, I think you should also still be using a physical method of sway control back there on those heavier trailers. I prefer the belt and suspenders approach because those physical systems will help prevent trailer sway in the first place. So there's a little bit less for these electronic systems to correct. Now you can still get trailer sway even with those mechanical trailer sway control systems. And that's where the sway control on this vehicle will help things out. You want the weight distributing hitch back there because even though this has that adaptive air suspension, which will load level and correct the suspension height in the rear for better handling, especially better emergency handling, the weight distributing hitch will help move some of the weight to the front axle to help even the load out. That improves overall vehicle dynamics, even when combined with an adaptive air suspension like this. So you really should be using both of those on heavier trailers like this. I haven't spent too much time towing with this particular truck just yet, but I can say that if you're doing a lot of heavy towing, this diesel is certainly the engine that I would choose, and I would likely get it over the 5.7 liter V8. Quite logically, Ram also puts the turbo diesel engine under the hood of the Ram Rebel. That's the off-road version of the 1500 truck. Here, it really benefits from the extra torque that we get out of the diesel. Again, 480 pound-feet of torque and the really low rock crawl ratio we have in this one of nearly 49 to one. When talking about torque, when the torque happens is just about as important as peak torque. We're gonna climb up a 30% slope right here. This is definitely pretty steep. Now, the three liter diesel beats the 5.7 liter V8 when it comes to torque by just a little bit, but that torque happens at very low RPMs. And that's really obvious when we're climbing this hill here. For, for instance, we're only in uh, second gear right here, the engine's spinning at 1200 RPM, and we're able to climb up this really steep slope. Now, just improving peak torque would be fairly easy in a new engine design, but FCA didn't just stop there. They gave this more torque across every RPM range versus the previous engine. So at those lower RPMs, right off idle, 1000 RPM or so, we get considerably more torque. Thanks to the gearing involved in the eight speed automatic transmission, you can go at higher speeds in four low. So you can easily do 40, 45 miles an hour or so without having to shift this back to four high. That's definitely handy in some situations. Other handy touches for off-roading are the fact that the eight-speed automatic transmission has a pretty wide spread. So we get excellent low-end acceleration and the high end is high enough that in off-road situations like this, even when we're in the low ratio mode, you can get up to speeds of around 40 to 45 miles an hour or so. So depending on the terrain that you're driving on, you may be on courses where you wanna go those higher speeds. And in older trucks, you'd have to go out of four low back into four high. You don't have to in this particular vehicle. We also have the available adaptive air suspension, which gives us more clearance overall than you'd find in the regularly sprung Rebel. 
Much like we see in the Grand Cherokee, remember that when the air suspension is at its highest height setting, you don't have as much suspension travel at the top of the suspension because the wheels are really pushed down quite far. And that does result in a slightly harsher ride than when the suspension is in the normal setting. So remember to reserve that one for just those lower speed rock crawling type situations where you really need the maximum in clearance. Again, remember, we do have skid plates here on the Rebel. But again, the area where you'll really notice the difference between this and the gasoline engines available in the Ram is going to be these lower speed maneuvers like this. We get a lot of low end torque, so it really feels very, very stable in these lower speed crawling situations. That's exactly why we saw the three liter diesel available in the Grand Cherokee. That's also why it's going to be available in the Jeep Wrangler and the Jeep Gladiator coming very soon. Bear in mind again that when you go to the dealer to take a look at a 1500 diesel, you'll find this model and you'll find the Ram 1500 Classic diesel on the dealer lot at the same time. This is going to be the more expensive option, starting at $36,890 for the Tradesman with the quad cab and two wheel drive. This is a $5,000 option over the naturally aspirated gasoline V6 and a $3,000 option in most trims over the V8 with e-torque. It's about a $3,300 bump on some trims. Those would mainly be the lower end trims like the Tradesman, the Bighorn, the Lone Star, etc. Which engine is right for you really will depend on your personal priorities. The massive amount of low end torque we find out of this engine will definitely pay dividends when it comes to towing, hauling, and off-roading. And we do get incredible range out of this engine as well because we get very high fuel economy, probably over 30 miles per gallon on the highway in the EPA numbers, that's my estimate. You should be able to drive from Duluth to Dallas on one fuel tank, that's about a thousand miles. Range figures that long may sound ridiculous at first, but if you were to connect a 10,000 pound horse trailer to this vehicle, remember that your fuel economy numbers could be cut in half. So that's gonna give you about 500 miles of range while towing one of those larger trailers. And that's definitely a big reason to get this over something like the 5.7 liter V8. That's definitely gonna be a lot thirstier than this diesel when towing those heavier loads. But the important thing to keep in mind here is that for the vast majority of shoppers out there, this diesel engine is never going to save you money, quote unquote, compared to the V6 or probably the 5.7 liter V8 either. Gasoline is less expensive than diesel in most areas of the country. The V6 is very fuel efficient in its own right, and it's $5,000 less to buy than this diesel right here. If you're looking for a half ton diesel pickup in America, you should definitely put the Ram 1500 on your shopping list. Exactly how it compares with the competition? Well, you'll have to wait until we get our hands on one of these for a complete week so we can run it through our usual battery of comparison tests, give you official zero to 60 and 60 to zero numbers, and do our complete comparison review at the end of that particular video. But at this moment in time, I can definitely say this is really high on my list. It has an interior that is definitely a leap above the Sierra and the Silverado, definitely still a step above the current generation Ford F-150. We have towing and payload numbers that are definitely good for a diesel in the half ton segment. Overall towing numbers from this are definitely higher than what we see in the F-150 and the Silverado diesel at the moment. Outside of the capability numbers, the Ram 1500 also has a more premium feel to it and better ride and better handling because of the suspension design. And that's even before we start taking a look at options like the adaptive air suspension. I've said it before and I'll say it again. In my opinion, the Ram 1500 is quite simply the best half ton pickup truck in America at the moment. Now, whether or not the diesel engine is the best engine option for you, that really will depend on your particular situation. But this still compares very well with the Ford and the GM competition. If you're looking to spend as little as possible, the Tradesman model is going to be about the same price as a Ford F-150 diesel, but we're going to get more torque out of this engine than we find in the Ford. And this is going to be a little bit less expensive than the General Motors Twins. Now the GM and the Ford pickup trucks do get a 10 speed automatic transmission. We won't know how that affects the overall performance numbers until we get this at home to give it an official number. But I suspect that the two are going to be fairly close because the eight speed automatic in this is definitely a solid transmission. And I like the way that this one shifts more than the General Motors and Ford 10 speed automatics. But as always, you will have to wait until we get our hands on one of these for a complete week so we can run it through our usual battery of tests and of course deliver our complete comparison section that you'd normally expect at this point in a regular review. Until then, be sure and let me know what you think about the Ram 1500 diesel down there in the comment section below. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button down there, hit the join button down there, find us over at Patreon or of course over at facebook.com slash alexnados and I'll see you next week.